Let's consider the following problem. We know that x plus 1 over x equals to minus 1, and we asked to find x to the power of 2021 plus 1 over x to the power of 2021. Now, I do not consider this problem annoying. This is a normal problem. What I consider annoying is how some people solve it. So imagine you are a person who just learned how to solve quadratic equation and you're happy to solve this problem. So you look at this equation, you say, okay, well, let's multiply this equation by x. This is what we're going to get. Let's rearrange the terms. And we're going to get ourselves a quadratic equation, and we know how to solve it. Our teacher told us how to do it. And our teacher told them that if you have an equation like this, with coefficients a, b, and c, the solution would be looking like this. And in our case, a, b, and c all equal to 1. And if you plug those numbers into this expression, you're going to get these roots. And now that person who just learned how to solve quadratic equation is going to get confused because he sees square root of a negative number and he was told there's no such thing as the square root of negative number. So there is no solutions and therefore there cannot be any solutions of this equation. But then he goes and watches the video in the video normally. This problem is solved not by finding the roots of this equation. And obviously there is a solution. And the person look at this solution and thinks, well, how is it possible? There shouldn't be any. And that's what I find the most annoying thing. Because really, this confusion could be resolved in a very simple way. If somebody comes and says, well, you see this equation? This equation does not have any real solutions. But it has complex solutions. And really, when you look at this equation, if you look at x, you should look at the complex solutions. This is not really too much to ask, to say a couple sentences regarding that solutions of this equation are complex, and then go ahead and solve this problem the way you want. Well, uh, just leave a comment if you have any thought about it. I know some people think that if you have an equation, you automatically should assume that solution is complex. Well, I disagree with that statement. I disagree with this approach because most of our problems are actually real, the problems we encounter. So it is more natural to assume that solution should be real. We can also follow some sort of best practices and simply specify the very beginning for any problem, whether we're looking for solutions among real numbers or complex numbers. That may be the way to go to avoid any confusion that could happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to solve this problem in two ways. One way is directly like the person who just learned how to solve quadratic equation, maybe we'll try to solve it. We're going to get our complex roots and then we're going to take them to the power of 2021 and find the answer for this expression. And the other way I'm going to do it by not finding the solutions of this equation and doing some kind of algebraic manipulation to get the answer we are looking for. So let's get started. So we already said that the solutions of this equation are these guys. Let's rewrite them in a more convenient way. In this case, we introduce number i, which is imaginary unit, or what some people like to say, it's the square root of minus 1. But the next thing we would like to do, we would like to take these numbers and take them to the power of 2021. And to do that, it's more convenient to use the polar form of complex numbers. And just to remind you, if I have a number z, which equals to a plus ib, in this case, the same number could be expressed in this form as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta where r is the absolute value of 
complex number z that can be calculated in this way. In our case, a will be minus one half and b will be plus or minus square root of three over two. And if you plug these numbers right here, you'll find that r should be equal to one. And then we also can find theta. Theta is an angle that has cosine equals to minus one half and sine equals to plus or minus square root of three over two. And such thetas are plus or minus 120 degrees or plus or minus two pi over three radians. And the next thing we wanna do, we wanna take this number and take it to the power of 2021. So here what we do, we applying the Moore formula that simply says that if you have cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, we can take this n and take it out from the power and put it inside of cosine and sine. And the next thing we need to do is to calculate cosine and sine of 2021 times theta. So let's start with cosine. In this case, we have this angle which we need to calculate. And what we're gonna do here, first of all, notice that cosine is an even function. And that means that whether there's plus sine or minus sine doesn't matter. So we can take it out. The second thing we do, we divide 2021 by three, and that will be 673 plus two third. And then if you multiply that by two pi, you get this expression. The next thing to notice that that cosine of two pi times any integer plus four pi over three equals to cosine four pi over three. Next thing to see that four pi over three is pi plus pi over three. And now we need to remember a formula that cosine of pi plus any angle equals to minus cosine of that angle. And here we know that cosine of pi over three or cosine of 60 degrees is one half and therefore we get an answer of minus one half. We can do a similar thing with sine. The only thing the sine is odd function, not even function. And that means that this plus or minus gets out of sine and can be put in front of the sine. The logic that we follow after that is the same. The only thing is different that the sine of pi over three is square root of three over two. If you're not familiar with this trigonometric formulas I use here, I posted links where you can go and see the details of the derivation. For now, I want to list all those formulas again. So the first formula tells us that cosine is an even function. So we can take out the minus here. Sine, on the other hand, is an odd function, and this minus goes out of sine. Also, cosine of two pi times any number n plus y equals to cosine of y. Same thing goes with the sine. Cosine of pi plus y equals to minus cosine of y. In a similar way, we have sine. So now we can plug these numbers into this formula and we're going to get that x to the power of 2021 is minus one half minus or plus i squared of three over two. So and the next thing you want to do if you want to take this number and add one of that number to calculate what we want to calculate. So let's consider a more general case. Here we have a number z, which equals to a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers. And we're adding one over that number. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna multiply the second term by a complex conjugate to our number z, and that is a minus ib. What we have in denominator now is a squared plus b squared, what we have a numerator is a minus ib. Now in our case right here, a is minus one half and b is minus or plus square root of three over two. 
If you plug those numbers here, we find that denominator is equal to 1. And our equation simplifies, and it turns out that z plus 1 over z equal to 2a, which is a real number. And in our case, a equals to minus 1 half. And that means that the solution to our problem is equal to minus 1. So that's one way to solve this problem. Now, let's consider another way where we're not going to find x. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some manipulation. Look at this equation. Or look at the left-hand side. This is quadratic polynomial that looks like this. For many people, this quadratic polynomial is familiar. In fact, whole family of quadratic polynomials like this is familiar. You can have quadratic polynomial like this, cubic polynomial like this, quartic polynomial like this, and so on. And we can get nth order polynomial that looks like this, where each term has coefficient of 1. And it turned out that these are special polynomials, because if you multiply them by x minus 1, they're going to be simplified a lot. In fact, if you multiply this polynomial here by x minus 1, you get x to the power of n plus 1 minus 1. And our particular polynomial is going to become x cubed minus 1. Now you can ask a question, how do I know this? Where are these things coming from? And really this is a known fact for people who study polynomial equations, who maybe learn about Abelard-Raffini theorem, maybe some Galois theory. But anyway, in those kind of lectures, it, this kind of polynomials are mentioned. If you multiply by x minus 1, we get this expression. Or in other terms, we find that x cubed equals to 1. Now we know what x cubed equals to, and let's calculate x to the power of 2021. So here we know that 2021 is 3 times 673 plus 2. That can be expressed in a different way. Here notice that we have x cubed, which equals to 1. And therefore, whole expression is equal to x squared. And what this means is the formula we try to find is really x squared plus 1 over x squared. But how can we find this gap? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is to take this guy and square it. And if we do square x plus 1 over x, we get the expression like this. And we know that this expression should be equal to 1. Now, if we look at this equality, we'll find that x squared plus 1 over x squared should be equal to minus 1. And therefore, x to the power of 2021 plus 1 over x to the power of 2021 should also be equal to minus 1. 